You just started your shift. Your patient has an order for a thousand milliliters of normal saline to be infused over eight hours. You're using an IV pump, so you need to know how many milliliters per hour need to be programmed into the IV pump. This is where dimensional analysis keeps you clear, accurate, and clinically safe. Let's start with what we know. The provider ordered 1,000 milliliters of normal saline to infuse over eight hours. That becomes our starting point, 1,000 milliliters over eight hours. This gives us the unit we're solving for, milliliters per hour, and sets the stage for the rest of our dimensional analysis. Now here's an important reminder. You won't always need to convert, but you always need to check. In this case, we're already in milliliters per hour, so no further conversion is needed. But if your time had been given in minutes, or the order said infuse over 480 minutes, you'd need to convert minutes to hours before solving. This is where your conversion chart becomes your best friend. So let's go ahead and solve. We start with what we know, 1,000 milliliters over eight hours. There's nothing to cancel here because we're already solving for milliliters per hour, which is our target unit. So now we just divide. 1,000 divided by 8 equals 125. The pump should be set to infuse at 125 milliliters per hour. Now let's step it up. We've got the basics down, so here's a new challenge. The provider orders 500 milliliters of lactated ringers to infuse over 2.5 hours. This time, we'll convert 2.5 hours to minutes so we can practice dimensional analysis with unit cancellation. Remember, this method is about understanding units, not memorizing formulas. So let's set it up carefully. Let's walk through the full setup. The order is for 500 milliliters of lactated ringers to infuse over 2.5 hours. Step one. Convert the time to minutes. 2.5 hours times 60 minutes equals 150 minutes. Step two, start with what's ordered and set up the conversion. 500 milliliters over 150 minutes times 60 minutes over one hour. Cancel out the minutes and now we're left with milliliters per hour. Multiply across the top. 500 times 60 equals 30,000. Multiply across the bottom, 150 times 1 is 150. Then divide. Your answer is 200. So the correct IV pump rate is 200 milliliters per hour. Let's step it up again. You're caring for a pediatric patient who weighs 15 kilograms. The provider orders D5 half normal saline with 20 milli equivalents of potassium chloride to infuse at four milliliters per kilogram per hour. Your job is to figure out the total milliliters per hour to program into the IV pump. Let's break it down. Step one, multiply the child's weight by the ordered rate. 15 kilograms times four milliliters per kilogram per hour equals 60 milliliters per hour. No further conversion is needed, but notice how the kilogram units cancel and what's left is milliliters per hour. Same rules apply, different level of complexity. And this one, definitely NCLEX style. Now it's your turn. Here's a challenge problem to see how well you can apply what you've practiced. The provider orders a thousand milliliters of normal saline to infuse over 10 hours, but the time is listed in minutes. 600 minutes. Your job? Calculate the IV flow rate in milliliters per hour. Remember your four steps. Start with what you know, add your conversion, cancel the units, and solve. Pause here and give it a try. Let's walk through the setup together. Start with what you're given. 1,000 milliliters over 600 minutes. Add your time conversion. 60 minutes over one hour. Cancel out the minutes. Now we're solving for milliliters per hour. Multiply across the top, 
1,000 times 60 equals 60,000. Multiply across the bottom. 600 times 1 equals 600. Divide, and you get 100. That's your IV pump rate, 100 milliliters per hour. If that felt tough, good. That means your brain is doing the real work of clinical reasoning. Every time you break down a problem like this, you're building safe, smart habits that matter in practice. In part B, we're going to take it a little further, calculating drip rates using drop factors, because not every facility has smart pumps. I'll see you there.